It's BC for Get Lowered, and it's time for the final step in my Stage 1 upgrade. We're going to install a Bassani Road Rage B4 system on my 2010 Harley-Davidson Road King. Now, the first step to installing any full exhaust system on a bike is that you've got to remove your existing one. I'm not going to bore you with all of the details about how to do it on your bike because your bike's probably different than mine, but I will walk you through the basic parts that have to happen. You have front head pipes, you have rear head pipes, and each of those are held on by a couple of bolts, and then you have a couple of brackets that hold your pipes in place. So. We have to remove all of those things, and in order to do that, one of the first things that you have to do on this particular bike is remove the right side floorboard. Okay, we've got the stock head pipes off, and like I said, I didn't really want to bore you guys with the entire removal process, and it may be different on your bike, but here's the basic deal. You're going to have a bunch of clamps, and all of those clamps are going to have to come off. You're going to remove all of your heat shields. On a touring bike, you're going to have a couple of hex head bolts that hold the muffler onto the rail support for your saddleback. Those have to come out as well. Once you have all of that out of your way, then it's just a matter of removing a couple of half inch nuts from the front cylinder and a couple of half inch nuts from the rear cylinder. You definitely want to be careful doing this because you can break things. And if you break off one of those studs into your cylinder, well, you're going to have a real bad day and a real expensive day as well. So take your time on it. I'd suggest a little penetrating oil if you happen to have an older bike or something that's got some rust on it at all. It's going to make your life a lot easier. Now, somewhat regardless of which exhaust system you end up buying, you're probably going to have to reuse some of the parts that come off of your stock system. For instance, I have to reuse my O2 sensors, so I've got them hanging there. And then I also have to get this little clip off of here, and then I have the flange that sits right down there that I'm going to have to pull off as well. All right, as you can see here, I've gone ahead and installed the flange and the circlip back in place. I've done it on the front pipe, same on the rear pipe. I've also gone ahead and reinstalled my O2 sensors. You have to pay special attention on these. One of them is going to go to the front pipe. One of them goes to the rear pipe. They are labeled with black and gray on the factory head pipes, uh, just a B and a G. And that corresponds to your connectors that you can see there is a gray one and there's a black one. So you can look back and get a point of reference for them, but just make sure that you uh, kind of keep track of which one's which. So our next step is to make sure that we remove the old gasket out of the head before we install a new one. These things are just a few bucks, like eight or nine dollars, and so you definitely don't want to try to reuse them. So just grab a mechanics pick and you're just gonna pull lightly on these and try not to destroy them as you come out. Now, don't go crazy in here. Pretty much everything inside of this head is made of aluminum, and that means that it's gonna scratch, and it's gonna bend, and you can destroy it. So, do yourself a favor, take your time with this, and get those out of there, and then install your new gaskets. With our new gaskets installed, now it's time to lift our head pipe into place and fit our flanges over these studs. Once we have the head pipes in place, now I understand, you can't see this very well, but all I did was just kind of finger tighten the nuts onto the studs. What we want is actually the ability to kind of move these around a lot still because we have to finish bracing the entire set of the pipes. So that leads us to our next step. So here's another one that you can't see real well because unfortunately it's in a big dark area. But what we've done here is take a hex head bolt and run it through an extension and then bolt that extension with an included second hex head bolt to the factory mounting point for the exhaust. Now, depending on your bike, you may have to do this a little bit differently. This was the instruction for my bike. I believe it is the five speed bikes. You actually have to replace that mounting bracket with one that Bassani includes. Our next step is to install the muffler. That starts by taking this T-bolt clamp and sliding it over the muffler. And then we are going to slide the muffler itself onto the collector until we get a nice stop on that. Then we're going to back it out until we are even with our mounting points on the back of the bike. Then we need to tighten this clamp. We're going to bring it up right here over the connection for the muffler where it meets the collector. 
We're going to tighten that down, not fully, but just enough to keep it in place. Now what I like to do, when I'm just to the point that it's going to start getting a little bit too tight, I like to go ahead and rotate this around to where that clamp and the screw is actually in the back. That way, once we get everything together, you're not actually going to be able to see the ugly part of that clamp. You're actually just going to see your exhaust. At this point, our exhaust is pretty much installed. Now, this is also the point where I disagree with Bassani's instructions. The first place that I disagree is that they didn't tell me to go ahead and put any bolts into that rear muffler support. I found that when trying to get that T-bolt clamp on, having those bolts just loosely threaded into the rear muffler support makes life a whole lot easier. The next thing that I disagree with them on is they say that now is when you should put your heat shields on and then you should go back from the front of the bike and work your way back tightening down each of your fasteners just a little bit and then work your way back up to the front. I kind of disagree with that as well. I found that in past exhaust installations it makes my life a whole lot easier if I don't have my heat shields in the way. So I'm going to ignore those instructions and I'll let you know if that ends up being a mistake. So our next step after getting the pipes mounted is to check for leaks. And the way that you do that is go ahead and fire your bike up and put your hand around primarily any kind of joint uh, such as up around the gasket or down where the muffler mounts to the collector. And I didn't feel anything when I was first taken off on the bike, but I've got some telltale signs. If you look at my head pipes, you can see that the rear head pipe has one kind of color going on and uh, extends down on its discoloration a little bit, uh, almost down into the, the loop back. Whereas the front head pipe has a different kind of discoloration going on, a uh, different color to it, and it's not extending down quite as far. So on top of the fact that things just don't quite feel right and they don't quite sound right, even though I didn't feel any leaks when I was uh, going through a leak checking the pipes, Obviously, there's something not right here. So in order to fix the problem, I need to loosen up a couple of things. I've gone ahead and loosened up the rear muffler mounts. Now, next, we need to hop down underneath here and loosen up the nuts on that bracket. And then I should have enough room to be able to wiggle the pipes around and get them locked back into place. All right, so I've gotten everything tightened back up and pushed into place now. Now, in general, what you don't want to do is crank these things down real hard. You're talking about aluminum studs and an aluminum head, and you can strip things out. But now that we've got it tightened back up, let's start up the bike and see what we find. There we go, everything looks to be in pretty good shape. Now all we gotta do is put on those heat shields. This isn't rocket science. We know that this heat shield is gonna sit down like that on the front pipe. And we know that we need to be able to reach this screw in order to adjust it. So I'm gonna have that screw facing up like that so that we can screw it in place and then slide it back down and around so you don't see the fastener when we get it down and tight. So in order to do that, we know that it has to sit like that. We're gonna bring it up like this and run right through that nice weld, just like that. We've got a couple to do here, one here on the end, one here on this end, and then once those are done, we can screw it all in place. With all the heat shields in place, this is the finished product. I gotta say, I am completely impressed, not only by the quality of the pipes themselves, but also just the quality of the coating that goes onto the heat shields, the welds that go onto the heat shield brackets, Everything about this system just screams quality. Now, of course, I'm not gonna let you go without hearing a final sound, so here you go. These are, bar none, some of the best pipes I've ever laid my hands on. 
I absolutely love the growl from these. They're not super loud, they're not super low, but there is a growl of power that comes out of these Bassani pipes that I've never heard anywhere else. Make sure to check out these Bassani pipes and the full line of exhaust products at getlower.com.